About two and a half years ago, I ordered my dream tank. It was a six foot water box tank and I filled it with African cichlids, which were one of the very first fish that I kept when my brother got them for his 18th birthday. I love Lake Malawi cichlids, but I wanted to have a little bit of a change. I came across the exact same tank, but in the peninsula style on Gumtree. Gallery Aquatica moved it into my townhouse for me, but then I had to move again two months later. So they moved it again for me and we set it up in my new place. Historically, I haven't been too big on planted tanks. I'm more of a fish person, but I met my friend Nick from Keeping Fish Simple and Jason from Australian Biotopes. Jason took us out to see some beautiful scenery and to catch some of these wild fish. And not only that, but he offered to scape the peninsula tank for me. I was having some trouble setting it up myself. I had this vision of a river cliff face that I wanted to create, but I wasn't having a lot of luck. So Jason showed me how you can build up a cliff face using crates and cartons and filling it with sand and then putting rocks around it to make a really beautiful cliff. I absolutely loved this tank and I appreciated what Jason did so much. I think the rainbow fish are beautiful, but they didn't pop in a vibrant way the same way that the Lake Malawi cichlids in the tank next to them do. And they're just such different fish. I really like with African cichlids how you can have the bright white sand and a lot of the fish are quite brightly colored and very active too. I find them to be a little bit more interactive than the rainbow fish. In this tank at the end of the day, I had plants that I didn't really like growing. I was keeping fish that aren't my favorite type of fish and me being someone who likes hardscapes and fish in particular, it wasn't quite matching what I like but I had a really great time going through that journey and in fact there's so many things that Jason showed me and taught me in terms of scaping that I couldn't have done this tank without it so for that I am really grateful. I had this scape for a total of around about 10 months before I did this. I'm going to show you the full process of scaping creating a rocky cliff face this time or lake bank I guess you could call it from taking the river scape apart to choosing substrate to choosing rocks to the process I went through to build the tank to choose the fish and to add lights and hopefully this gives you some inspiration for your own tank this is something that you can create fairly easily by just building up your substrate and using those crates and adding some nice light rocks around it without further ado let's get into it and I'll show you the process of scaping this tank Although I had known for quite some time I was going to turn this into a Tanganyikan tank, the actual journey of scaping the tank began about a month ago. I'm going to head to my local aquarium store, Mad Aquariums, to check out and see what rocks I've got there. I'm thinking of going something different. I don't want to necessarily go for this Texas Holy Rock again because I want it to be something that I can actually stack and build up just like what Jason did with this riverbank when we first created it. I'm going to make use of the crates and everything again. The vision that I had for this tank, being a peninsula tank, was very similar. I wanted to create, again, a rocky cliff face and was going to use some of the crates that Jason had used for the original riverscape in there, but I had to decide what type of rock I wanted. I didn't want it to be the same type of Texas holy rock that my African cichlids have, partly because that rock is so heavy, but also I just wanted a change of colour. I decided to go to Bunnings to see if they had any cheap rocks. Oh, it smells so good. I don't know if other countries have this, but we have Bunnings sausage sizzles at our warehouse place. You get a sausage for $2. It's so good. This is basically more just garden landscaping. And a lot of this stuff, if you look on it, it will say that you can't use it for aquariums too. So nothing is quite matching what we need here. And then alternatively, they've got more just like bricks and stuff which is what I'm not sure if it's gonna be like when I go to a landscaping place. I think I need a gardening place, probably two. I had no luck at Bunnings. So what I did was the next weekend, I went and I had a look at some local gardening stores. But before I did that, I went to Clark Rubber and I got four bags of Unicorn pool filter sand. Four bags, yeah. It doesn't do anything to your pH, but the sand is cheap. It's like 15 or 20 dollars per 20 kilograms, and it's really nice and clean. You too. Alright, let's go. So basically, the plan is is that 
we need to go check out a landscaping supply place. Last week we went and looked at Bunnings. They didn't really have any rocks that would be appropriate for putting in a fish tank and doing an aquascape. So the one place I haven't checked is the local gardening, like landscaping places. And because the rocks at Mad Aquariums, they look nice, but they don't do anything to the water like what my Texas Holy Rock does in my Malawi tank. It actually raises the pH, it has a functional purpose as well as looking nice. And so this olive rock that I'm looking at getting does not have a functional purpose. So if I can find it somewhere that is cheaper, I can get more. I can see a lot of tiles and stuff, not a lot of rock and some like, kind of like little pebble stone things. If you needed gravel, this would be good. Granted, you'd probably have to wash it quite a bit. There's some boulders, but I don't think they're for sale. If we could find rocks like that, that would be good. We've got all of this like drainage cell and stuff and these bagged pebbles, but again, nothing really for fish tanks. It's all more gardening stuff. So I think we're going to have to go somewhere else and see what else we can find. I still wasn't having any luck at the landscaping store. So I decided to give it one last shot and call a local nursery to see what they have. Can you sell some rocks by any chance? Like ones that you could wash and put in a fish tank. I don't have any like aquariums or rocks. We've got like bags of pebbles. Probably go to like Athens Aquarium in West End. Okay, alright, I might check them out then. Athens Aquarium, a nursery and aquarium? I have never heard of this. 30 minute drive. Let's go, let's do it. I did end up going on a little bit of a journey to Mappin's Nursery and Aquarium Centre, which I had somehow never heard of, despite it being 20 minutes from where I live. These little mini figurines, so they've got like some little mushrooms and lady beetles and flamingos. And basically you can put these in like pot plants or you could put them in like a little terrarium as well and decorate it. Some setups as well near the aquarium section that shows you how you can put those in a terrarium. If you go through here, you can see it's aquarium section. We've got some rainbow fish as well and a big goldfish in here that was really nice to get to see that place but again the rocks they had were more kind of for nanoscapes and it was just priced like an aquarium store so I crawled back to Mad Aquarium. <laughs> would we be able to weigh all of that rock and see how much it would cost to get all of that? Which one did you want to try out and weigh it out? Well, I guess if I'm going to get that rock, I'd probably have to get all of it. Yep. It's such a big tag. <laughs> yeah, I'll so, weigh them up. Yeah, I'll weigh some here and put some at the we'll front as well. Two let's two add them up together. Is that why you asked if we've got more? Yeah. Because <laughs> I don't know if it's going to be enough. And the shape's kind of awkward, but I guess I can, I'm going to stack it up. Yeah, I'll definitely ask my manager as well. We've got some more at the back. Okay. That's 14 kilos. So On the other scale. That's already 140. Is that right? Am I mapping right? 10 times 14. And that's 11.3 kilos for those two. Maybe it weighs less than Texas Holy Rock. A little bit of pores everywhere. Not as compacted as a cheaper class. Yeah, because one of those rock will usually be 200, 300. We're a decent size. This is way cheaper than you. I'm not gonna have to die when I'm actually escaping the tank and I'm getting it and bringing it inside and everything. So that is a really nice surprise. I really love in this lava rock that it comes from volcanoes. So this has literally been lava before and you find a bunch of different cool minerals and crystals and stuff inside of the rock too. I just think it's really beautiful. Boxes, like 90% smaller pieces. Sweet. Wait, that's only 5 kg? Yes, yeah, sweet. Yeah, it is. Yeah, okay. You get, you grab these ones here as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. It weighs a lot less than the Texas Holy Rock. It's easy to scape with and to build structures with because you're not going to have to worry so much about a big collapse happening. But it's also good for someone like me who's not super strong to get in and out of the car and everything and into the tank. Plus, it's a lot cheaper too. Once I got home, I knew I had to get moving. I got my quarantine tank set up for my rainbow fish to go into. I'm not sure what I'm going to be doing with these fish yet. I'm probably going to be giving them to some friends, but for now they're just going to be sitting in there. I have a canister filter, but it unfortunately was not running. And what happens is all of your bacteria can go a little bit gross and smelly in there if it's not running. So if you've left it off for a while, it's best to just give it a big rinse out and start fresh. Luckily, I've got a sump, so it makes it super easy to go and get some beneficial bacteria to add into filters that I want to start up for tanks. So I went and grabbed 
some bio balls and media and swapped some of the old ones into my sump. Once the bulk of the fish were out, then I slowly started to remove rocks and logs, driftwood, all of that. You just have to be really careful if you've got plecos like what I do, because they tend to stick to the driftwood. It was a little bit sad undoing all of Jason's hard work because I recognized that he did work so hard to set this up for me. And I really, really learned so much from that experience. And I'm so grateful for getting to go on all of the adventures that I did with Jason as well and see all the things that he showed me. So what I'm thinking, we'll start at the top and we will work our way down the bottom to try and make sure we can do it in order of how they were placed. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna remove some of these smaller ones that are just sitting on the top here. And it's okay if some of our sand avalanches, but I just don't want our boulders to do that. But I don't know if those things are mutually exclusive or not. I guess we'll find out. And we'll get rid of some of our branches, stuff, bits of driftwood that we used to look like roots in there. You can see where the sand has been stacked up here. So, I'm thinking I'm gonna grab a bowl and I'm gonna actually start shoveling some of that sand out while it's sitting at the top. I mean, it's not completely sand because there is some egg crate in here, but if we can just push some of the sand out, start getting it in a bucket, that's gonna help us a little bit as well. And get some of this stuff in here. I don't know what that is. That's like broken down wood, I think. That's incredible, wow. I wonder if that's from like the plecos and stuff. We put the less, you know, pleasant looking sand that I'd got from Bunnings underneath where it's hidden. And then we put the nicer, more natural looking sand around it. But I think we're just gonna have to mix it all in together. And just get as much sand out as possible for now. You can see some of that crate revealing itself now. All was going well when I was unpacking the scape until I ran into a bit of a problem. Some of the big boulders that Jason had put in the tank were actually really heavy. I don't know if I can lift that. And I realized that they were too heavy for me to actually move on my own. I just don't think it's gonna be viable for me to lift this rock up. I reckon this big rock, if we can sit that on there, then what we could do is those rocks that I got from Mad Aquariums, they're not that heavy. So I think we could use some of that glue that is hopefully still good that Jack from Mad Aquariums gave me quite a while back, almost a year ago now. And because those rocks are quite light, I reckon we can see if we can try and glue them around this and see if we can conceal it. They are quite dusty. So I think let's give them a good hose down. dig the crate. Um, that seems decent enough to me. Okay, so what I've gone and done is I've gone and got a bunch of that pool filter sand and I've popped it in here. I'm gonna grab our glue that we've got and you don't need too much of this. What I'm gonna try and do is I'm gonna cover that rock as much as I can with this glue and then I'm going to stick our sand. I'm gonna pour our sand over that rock and hope it sticks so we can make that actually look like a built up bit of sand. Then what I did is I got the glue and I just would pour some of the liquid glue onto the rock and then some of the sand over the top to try and cover some of the color and conceal it and make it look a little bit like it was a built up bit of sand.
and I know this sounds really dodgy but you'll be able to see how it all came together. Then what I did is I got some smaller pieces of rock and put them around the big piece to see if I could get them to cover it but I wasn't using the glue properly, I was just putting it bare on the rocks. Aside from that though, I didn't really have enough rock and it looked a little bit odd. I just filled up the tank and then I drained it one time to get rid of some of the particles so I could see properly and then the next morning I had a look at what I had created. Alrighty, so it is the next day and it's Sunday about midday so it's time to go pick up our fish. Oh yeah. I forgot to add that when I went in to get the rest of my rocks I also picked out a bunch of fish that I was planning to pick up on the Sunday. The reason being is that I didn't want to leave the tank without any fish in it. The beneficial bacteria can start to die off if they've got no ammonia source to feed off. So I thought this would be a good motivator but it just meant I ended up staying up very late the night before. I went to bed at like 4am last night because I had a video to upload and stuff and I was busy doing this and everything. So. I'm exhausted and honestly we've got a ways to go with this. Um, I don't think that that different colour rock looks great and some of the crates poking through so I think we're going to have to get some more glue, we're going to have to get some smaller bits of rock, really try and properly glue that around there and then if you have a look over this side it um, pays to not be lazy like me because we have a little bit of a sand issue happening here. Uh, but I mean it is it's hard doing it on your own I am making excuses though because I should probably be a little bit more careful with the way that I do things this is why I don't really do scapes because I rush things and I get impatient <laughs> and all I want is just my fish in there and some rocks but we're gonna get this all sorted out all right guys it's gonna be okay so today is the day, we're at Mad Aquariums and we're picking out the fish. Well, we're not picking them out, we're just collecting them. So Kai over here is grabbing them out for me. So we've got our Firefox Gold Trophies that we're getting first here. And I just ended up deciding to take all of them because I read that it's better having more of them, like a bigger colony and I thought I don't see them that often so it's worth just grabbing them while they're here. There they are, little bag ups. I got six golden Firefox Trophies, I got five Lei Lupi, three Attenuatus ones, six gold comp cichlids, five Neo Tredocephalus, and then two black calvis. We weren't 100% sure how all these fish were going to fare together, especially the Trophies, since Trophies can be quite aggressive to other fish. But knowing I've got a sump, I just wanted to give it a go, since the tank is quite big and there's lots of hiding places, to see what we could get away with. So we bagged up the fish and I got some extra little bits of rock as well, so some smaller bits to stick on. And Kai showed me how to properly use the glue as well. Grab yourself a bit of tissue. Some people like to use cotton wool, some people like to use cigarette butt filters. So you shove it in between your, your rocks. What that acts, it just increases the surface area. Got it, okay. And actually make sure that the, basically gets the glue to stay in one spot, but also, yeah, basically it's an interme intermediary material so it actually holds on. All right, give it like 10 seconds. All right, and what I like to do, get yourself a bit of crushed rock or soil or whatever you want to use. Just sprinkle it on. Perfect. We've got a little demo thing here that we, <laughs> we sort of glue, glue bits and pieces on, but once it actually holds on, you're not going to get it off. Glue doesn't bond to wet stuff very well, so if your rocks are really wet, dry it out before you do it off. And hopefully that bag does not break. <laughs> no, it won't. It's light. Lava rock super light. Okay, now that the water is a bit lower, we can actually get a better idea of where we need to stick some rocks. So where the crate is poking through and everything and fix it up. So that's what I'm going to do now, just how Kai showed us to do in store. I'll just pat the rocks a little bit dry just to help with the binding. And we'll get some of this yucky sand out and go from there. Alrighty, we are done with the hardscape. That glue was such a lifesaver. I'm so glad I had it. I was able to glue all of the rocks so they're relatively stable um, on here. And then just where I had bits of tissue, 
I just hammered a rock outside and got some powder off it so I could just like pour the glue on and then pour some powder on and cover up some of those joins not that it matters overly because it's white sand so the white paper doesn't really stand out but all I'm gonna do is grab that one last bag of sand and I'm gonna just kind of like pour it over here to get in some of the crevices and really make like a nice mound there and then we should be good to go and it's probably a good time to take note of the lights that I've got on this tank. I've got Chiros Vivid Minis on there, but I was never super satisfied with them. I just found that sitting on the couch next to my tank, the lights were just too bright and they didn't quite have the same effect that my AI Prime lights that I've got on the Lake Malawi African Cichlid tank had. So I reached out to AI to see if they would like to send me some AI Prime lights. They were kind enough to send me the lights, but I didn't realize that AI Prime lights are not designed to go on the bar. So I had to figure out what on earth I was going to do with those lights when the four of them arrived. And it's kind of a little bit like the gluing sand onto a rock saga all over again. But first, let's fill up the tank and add the fish in. I've got another big boulder that I can add down here if it'll look good. Uh, I might do that just to put something there and then I'm going to put the little bits of rock all around as well. I will give you a proper look at the scape once the water's settled and clear and everything so you can see it. That rock there was an absolute nightmare to get in. It was so scary, but I'm glad that I got it in in the end. We got our little guys. They are ready to get added. They're just going to sit and acclimate to the temperature for a little bit. You guys are crazy. They look pretty good. Beautiful. The Lele Lupi haven't haven't been brave enough to leave this little area here. Alright. So let me show you what else I got. We got a little bit of extra lava rock to put in the tank, just especially down the end here. I don't want anything crazy because Jack was even saying that it's good having a bit of open space for the trophies so the ones that get bullied can have an area that they can get away. That kind of helps. I think it worked well actually sticking and gluing some of the sand on these rocks to make sure they remain a little bit more covered. You can see where I've glued sand on that one too. It just kind of covers the color of that rock. Helps it to blend in a little bit but I think we could probably pop a couple of like little rocks and stuff just around there just to put some more darkness there and bulk it up a little bit. I also went and got a few more trophies. If you saw my most recent video, you will have seen I went to Atlas and I got some trialless cichlids as well. Not long after that, I went back to my aquariums and I got a few more trophies. I got two different types to add in because the ventralis went well and I kind of had faith that I thought that these trophies would go okay. Then the last thing left was to work out how on earth I was going to add those AI prime lights onto the brace. It is time that I get cracking on finally finishing up the last aspects of the Tank and Nikon tank. In general, I just don't like stuffing around with lights. I find cables and cords difficult to manage. I find Bluetooth a little bit finicky as well. So I have been avoiding doing this. They've got these little grates at the top. And then what you do is they have a part where you can screw a screw into them. And then you, from the end, when it's not put together, you slide it down and put them where you want them to be. So if I was to take the screws out, I would have to disassemble one side of this big bar, which I don't want to do. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to unscrew these Chihiro slides from here. So I'm just going to unscrew the screw and hope that works. And then I'm going to take them the lights off, which will leave our screws in there. I've just got my screws left now, little cable management things on the net here. We've got our three Chihiro slides that have been taken off down there. This should be a little bit lighter now. We should be able to remove this. Just avoid smacking my tank if possible. And this has never been dusted, so maybe it's a good opportunity to do that. I thought about putting like a clear fishing line or something through each side and using that to tie around it and hang them, but I shined my phone light through these and I just don't think that the gap in these is big enough to get from one side to another. So I had a bit of a brainstorm and a look around what I had and I found some Velcro that I had from when I used to make liners for my guinea pigs. I spaced out the lights 29 centimeters each from one end to the other. Then what I did was I cut some Velcro and 
I used some super glue to stick it on and I just put it about six centimeters uh, apart the two little ends of the velcro and then I super glued the other part of the velcro onto the AI prime light it actually stuck pretty well so I knew that it seemed like it was going to work I tried turning the light on too just to make sure that it wasn't going to overheat I'm going to put them on for I'll put it on for one minute this is just the setting that it comes with just on 50% capacity so I went ahead and I velcroed all of the other lights on too then I stuck some books on top of them and I left them overnight the next day I came home and I popped them on top of the tank for one minute oh my goodness that is so beautiful oh I love it I really really love it and it's so much better on your eyes I can see more now where you can see bits of crate and stuff that they've dug through. It's not super noticeable, but there is just a little bit in there that you can see. And there's just some, hello, it's so cute. There's just some around the other side too. So I can really clearly see that crate there now, which I couldn't really see that well before it was kind of hidden. And then we can really see the fish now a lot better too. Where is the crystal one? Oh yeah, this one with a little bit of green crystal. I really want to put that somewhere that I can see the crystal because I think it's really pretty. It is now Thursday the 12th of October. Let me give you a little bit of a look at what we ended up doing. And of course this can still be a work in progress and we can change things around and stuff as we go. But what I actually decided on, I really like it just having that nice bare space there, especially because I tend to feed these guys just there. And what I did too is that extra rock that I added on top of that mound I just moved it down a little bit and I'm really liking it there because I think that the little bit of crystal stands out more and I do like that bit of crystal and I think it looks really nice with the different colors and actually having that light of rock poking through and the fish seemed a bit happier when I removed it I think that they use that as like a little highway area <laughs> like they're often swimming over it so it makes you able to see the fish a little bit more too which I think is really nice and I'm loving my AI Prime lights that I've added on. They've been great. I love the shimmery effect that they create. So there's been no issues with that. I'll keep you updated on how this little mix goes. Now it is daytime, so my sump isn't on at the moment, but let's jump to nighttime and I'll show you what this looks like with the lids off. Alrighty, it's now nighttime and I've taken the lids off both of the tanks just so you can get a really nice look at them. So nice and bare top now. Got our Lake Malawi cichlids over here and then our Tanganyikan guys and it's looking very nice and beautiful. So I also did play around with the scape a little bit yesterday so it might be clearer. It might actually clear up a little bit more too but I thought I'll show you the sump just so you can have a little bit of a look at that. I won't go too into detail. I do have a few videos on my sump filtration and the setup and everything down here but as you can see there is a bunch of pothos in there and that has helped keep the nitrates down considerably like when I checked the nitrates in this tank they were really low they were like 20 parts per million after two or three weeks so that's a big difference compared to this African cichlid tank that has no plants other than the algae on the rocks and their nitrates get super high, like over 40 parts per million within a week without having anything to take the nitrates out. So the pothos definitely helps and you can see here too the pothos has started to actually grow out of the tank unintentionally. I don't know if I mentioned it but I also popped a heap of crushed coral in the filter. So I do add Malawi buffer, I mean Tanganyikan buffer in to the tank as well but that crushed coral just helps to buffer the pH from having any swings when I do a water change. I've been giving them a mix of New Life Spectrum Thera A pellets, which are a nice low protein pellet, so they're not too high at all in protein because I've got a mix of carnivores and herbivores in this tank. This is a good in-between food where all of the types of fish like it and so far so good. I haven't had any issues with bloat or anything like that with my trophies and all of them seem to like it. I have even put some brine shrimp in there at times which I generally like to do when my fish are little um, just to help them grow and I'll also give them some spirulina bug bite flakes too which are more algae based food which the trophies like too but everyone loves those Thera A pellets. 
and I normally just sink them because otherwise they sometimes float and then go into the sump. And so if you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a like. I put a lot of work into this one, or well, a lot of work into my tank. And I hope that the filming was okay. It's a little bit hard filming over weeks because it's, it's a lot to keep track of doing it. But let me know what you thought of the video. Was it too long? Was it good? Was there more you would like included? Are there any other videos on this scape in particular that you would like me to do? What do you think of the scape? Do you like the different coloured rocks? Is there anything you think I should change? I'd love to hear all of your feedback and what you think and we'll go from there. Don't forget to subscribe. It helps to support me and get my channel out there and show that people are appreciating the content but it also benefits you because then you'll get more of my content recommended. You can hit the little bell icon to actually get notified when I upload new videos too. And once we hit 50,000 subs, I'm wanting to get some merchandise for the channel too so that we'll be able to get that going. Um, lots of plans for in the future. So if you want me to keep making videos and keep doing this, make sure you let me know so I can see that it's appreciated and that the support's there. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.